in today's video I'm going to talk about how we can use files in Python programs. Um, I'm going to create a text file using a text editor and then I'm going to write a Python program to read that text file. So today we're going to talk about files. So let's go and have a look at the uh, presentation on files. So I'm going to my home page, go to the schedule and we're currently in the fall 2017 semester. The same topics will be in this semester, but let's click on this one. Uh, click on any of these links to go to the schedule. And now files is covered in week nine. So here we have a PowerPoint presentation that you can click on this and see the presentation. Uh, here is the a link to the same presentation and in the textbook this is a link to the textbook you want to focus on chapter 14 sections 1 to 5. Uh, we also have example programs um, which are covered which cover the topic of files uh, I'll refer to those when we look at the presentation so I'm going to click on files and exceptions and searching and here is the PowerPoint. I'm going to open that. And there we go. Now currently I'm using uh, Ubuntu Linux version 17.10. And uh, you can use, you can open the same PowerPoint in Windows or on an Apple machine. And, uh, but for today's exercise, I'm going to show you how to create and read files using Python. Now I'm using a Linux machine, but the same program will work exactly the same in Windows or in Apple. Uh, I don't have an Apple machine, so I can't actually demonstrate that. But so now let's just run this slideshow from the start. And this is uh, something completely different. We're going to be looking at files. This is a new topic. And if we I'm going to divide it into two sections I'll introduce files and then I'll show you some operations that we can do with files and so the first part introduction to files now Python has what's known as a file object type and that permits the use of file methods now the methods that we can use with file objects are uh, for example we've got the open method which will open a file We've got the close method, which will close the file. We've got, we can also use the read method to read a file. Read line will read a line of a file. We can write to a file. These are all the sorts of methods you'd expect to be able to use with a file. So now we're going to be using text files. And text files are simple files that, be, that can be created. If you've got Windows, you could use Notepad or WordPad or a word processor to create a text file. So I'm going to use the text editor that comes with Ubuntu Linux. Uh, you can use any text editor to create a text file. Now this is uh, an old screen from uh, Windows 98, but here I'm showing you how to open up Notepad to create a text file using Notepad. Now Notepad is available on all Windows machines. Uh, you might need to click on the start button, all programs, go to accessories and then find notepad. Now here I've got an example screenshot of uh, notepad and I've written some text in this, this editor and this file will then be saved. Now you can save your text files to any folder. Uh, in this example I'm saving to the C drive, to the temp folder. Uh, on my Ubuntu machine, I'm going to save to my home folder on the desktop. So you save your file and then once your file is saved, you can then do some operations on your file. Now I'll just show you the next few screens, then I'll go to my desktop and show you my file and create a Python program that will read the file. So an example program using a file is now this particular program is running on a windows machine and is using the file called file1.txt which is stored 
on the C drive in the slash temp folder. And here is the code to read that file. Now I'm going to simplify matters a little bit. I'm going to put my Python file on the desktop and I'm going to put my text file on the desktop. In that way, I don't need to specify a folder, a path when I'm opening my file. So let's make things simpler now. I'm going to turn this uh, presentation off and let's go to my desktop now. Now on my desktop, I've created a Python file earlier, which is going to open the file called file1.txt. Now file1.txt I created using the text editor <coughs> on Ubuntu. Um, but you can use any text editor, save your file to the desktop on your machine. And so let's have a look at this file I created earlier. It's called file1.txt. And there it is. So Anne was here on Friday the 3rd of November 2017 at 1220. Now the time now is 1250, so I'll change that one. And let's put an extra line. Today is very cold and wet. Okay, that'll do. And if you want to, you can separate your sentences onto new lines. And there we have our file. So I'm now going to save this. And it's saved my file. The file is called file1.txt. I've saved it to the desktop on my computer. Now earlier I created a Python file called files1.py. And this program is going to read this file and print out what it reads. So let's go to open my Python editor. Now I'm going to open in Ubuntu using the terminal and type idle and that will then open up my Python 3 shell. Don't need that window now. Right, so now let's open a file, file open, and I'm going to go to the desktop on my Ubuntu machine and there is my file files1.py so I'm going to open that file and there it is. So what is this program going to do? Well what this program is going to do is it's going to open the file called file1.txt this is file1.txt saved onto my desktop now because my program and my text file are on the same folder, basically on the desktop, then we don't need to specify the path. Just type in the name of the file, and that has to be in quotes, either double or single quotes. And if you're going to open the file for reading, then after a comma you would put in quote marks R. This is an access code for reading. It's read. It means read from the file file1.txt. Now open is a method. Now open is a method that can be used with a file object. It's a method or a function. It can open a file. Once this file has been opened, then in future we'll refer to the file as file1 in the program. So here we're going to open file1.txt for reading and then we're going to refer to the file as this file one object now you could use any variable name here for the file file one is just an example <coughs> now i'm going to use the read line method on the file one object by typing file one dot read line once this is executed a line will be read from file one and then assigned to this variable I called string. Then I'm going to print the string and then close the file. So let's see what happens. So here is my code. And when I run this code, it's going to open this file. This is file one.txt. It's going to read a line into the string variable called string and then it's going to print the string and close the file. 
Now, just a reminder, at the end of the line here, there is a hidden new line character, uh, which, if it's enclosed in a string, is the escape character backslash n. So you will see when it reads the string that it will read an with its new line. So let's run this now. And there you go, there is the word an, and there's your new line printed. So we've read one line, let's now read another line. So let's, let's uh, change my code, so it's going to read two lines. So I'm going to copy this piece of code, paste it, and let's run again. So this time, when it opens the file, it always opens at the top, ready to read the first string or the first line in the file. So when you open a file, it's ready at the top. If, it read, if you read one line, it reads the first line, then it's ready to read the next line, and so on. When you close the file, the file is closed, and if you want to use it again, you have to open the file. So let's see what happens now. Now remember, this time it's going to read two lines. And there they are. So this little blank line here is because we, at the end of each line, we have a new line. It's an invisible new line character, and it's an escape character backslash n. Now, if you wanted to read the entire file instead of just one line at a time, instead of using read line, we would use the method called read. So let's try using the read method instead and run this. And there you go, it's read, in this case, it's read the entire file and printed out the entire file. So it reads the entire file into one variable called string and then prints the string. Now the string variable is actually of data type string. So let's just make sure that you see that the variable that we call string is actually of data type string. Now you may be a little bit confused on calling a variable string. So let's let's change that into I'll call it my line and then we will print my line. Or maybe I should call it the text, which might make it the text. Because in this case, we're not just reading one line, we're reading all the text. And uh, let's print the type of the text, the text, before we end the code. So let's try this again. I'm going to delete the old shell. We don't need that one. We need to save this code and run. And there it is. So just to remind you that when you read from a text file into a variable, that variable is of type, data type or class string. It's a string. So text files contain strings. So here I'm reading the entire, uh, the entire file, the contents of the entire file into one variable, which I call the text. Now, if you want to read a line, we've seen you type read line. If you want to read just, say, five characters from a, a text file, you would put read five. If you want to read ten characters, you type read ten. So let's see what happens now. So read ten means it's going to read ten characters from a text file. Now remember, a new line counts as one character. So let's see what happens when this runs. And there it is. So here it's read 10 characters from the file called file1.txt. So we've got four characters here. New line is one character, so that's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Those are 10 characters, bearing in mind that backslash n, which is new line, counts as one character. Okay, so just going back to my code again. 
An important thing to remember when you finish using your file, remember to close the file. Now you don't need to give the name on the disk of the file. You simply use the name of the file object. So when you use the close method, you don't need to put anything in the parentheses or brackets to refer to the name of the file. Python already knows the name of the file because when the file was opened, the name of the file was given and the reference to that file was then stored in the file one object. So that's a brief introduction to using files. In this case, we're on Ubuntu Linux, but you could run the same code on a Windows machine or on any other computer. And But remember that if you do not specify the path to the file, then store your program and your file in the same folder, then you don't need to specify a file path. Okay, I'll leave it at that point and I'll see you in the next movie.